right, hello everybody. We're here. It's 9.30. It's time for the healthy half. I'm getting a few things done here right quick, so go ahead and tune in. Talk amongst yourselves, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get things up and rolling here, and you'll get to hear from Mr. Mike Unkelbach about, uh, well, his life of awesomeness so far. <laughs> I say so far. Oh, yeah, if y'all didn't know, uh, his daughter, who's the president of this company, just had a birthday yesterday. Yeah, happy birthday, yeah. Laura. Yeah, happy birthday. Um, how cool is that? Come here. Sorry, Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi issues. Third, third world problems. Or actually, first world problems. If it's trying. Keep on thinking, man, I wish, I wish I had my phone to mess with this with. It's sitting right there. I'm looking at you. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. So we can see the live feed and we see your questions. So, yeah, do we live in an I want it now world or what? <laughs> yeah, yes, we do. If it doesn't work in three seconds or less, it's broke. We're in so much of that world that we, we have to go to our own stunts like Tom Cruise and break an ankle and put production on a movie back six weeks. <clears throat> so, if you're expecting to see uh, Mission Impossible 6 anytime soon, well, you're going to have to wait a few extra months. <laughs> well, the question is, did we need to see Mission Impossible 6 anyway? Sorry, Tom. Don't really need to see it. <laughs> just, it's the want to. The question is, what is he going to try? What, what kind of wild, off-the-wall stunt is he going to try next? That is the question. Because... The new stunt's supposed to be much bigger and ridiculously and possibly stupid than the last one, which was him hanging off the side of an airplane while it took off. I did that yesterday. You did that yesterday? No, I didn't hang on the side. I just took off. Just just the takeoff part. Well, it feels like when you're on your bike on a windy day, right? There you go. Yeah, come back here, come back here, come back here. Scrolling too far. There we go. Touchy, touchy, touchy. Okay. There we go. Okay. All good now. We're happy. Ah, camera's up. We're up and going. So, Mike, how you doing? You know what? It's a wonderful day. Good. So, for everybody out there, thank you for joining in. This is, of course, the healthy half. Why the healthy half? Because, well, we're the healthy half. And it's a half-hour show. So, you get to uh, hear the, uh, the, the secrets of the healthy half, of which Mr. Mike here, here is, most definitely now, especially. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, his, uh, your past history of not being a part of the healthy half, or not so much of them coming into that. Uh, for, anybody else, for anybody that hasn't seen the show yet, uh, this is kind of a, a one-on-one, talking back and forth, uh, and really, you, everybody has stuff going on in their life, okay? you got family, you got friends, you got kids, you got school coming up, 
you've got uh, work, you've got illnesses, you've got whatever, whatever you're dealing with on a daily basis in your life, we know you're dealing with it, okay? We all do. Um, and everybody that comes on the show are you know, highly, highly, um, highly successful and successfully healthy even with everything that they do because most of these people run, run one or two businesses, uh, maybe they get something going on the side, and then of course, you know, once again, you've got everything else with family and, and, and all that stuff. So the big thing is, they're gonna give their secrets for how they do this on a daily basis and do it simply with some, with some really good small decisions <laughs> that we'll talk about in a little bit. And um, you know, basically, pull, pull from this, learn from it, um, pull, some of the, pull whatever you think is gonna work in your life, and this way you can start living a much healthier life uh, for yourself, for your family, and, and everybody else. Um, and more importantly, for you, because that's, I mean, if you're not living a healthy life for you, then you, know, you need to start reevaluating life because you've gotta take care of you first. Um, so, Mike, thanks for coming on. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. It's, it's always nice to get in front of people and, you know, talk about doing life. Talk about how to have a more productive life. Talk about how to be prepared for the things that life's going to throw at you. And for me, a lot of times I get to talk about, okay, what happens, you know, when life hits you upside the head with a two-by-four? Yeah. yeah, which, which it, it will at times. And... Um, you know, one thing with you, you're in the insurance industry. You know, that's, that's your main that's your main job. That's, that's what you've been doing for how long now? 39 years. Okay. I got my license the day I turned 18. I'm about to turn 58. So it's I, been it's I, been my life. I didn't want to say anything, but he's been doing insurance for as long as I've been alive, minus <laughs> a year. Um, <laughs> so um, so that, that's a long time. That's, that's a long time of seeing things change. A lot of things come and go. Yes. But, in, in, in the insurance industry, in the health industry, in the medical industry, how those interact, how those interplay, and then just basically people's lives, you know, you know, what people choose to do with their, with their daily life, and how that impacts all those things. I know that's been a huge, huge thing. You know, in 39 years in the insurance industry, I'll tell you guys, you know, I'll take you, give you a little bit of good old day syndrome. Um, the very first health insurance policies I ever sold 39 years ago, Hundred and twenty-eight dollars a month for the family. That was with a five hundred dollar deductible, which everybody thought was huge. What do you mean five hundred dollar deductible? Mm -hmm. uh, we've changed just a little bit to today. Yeah, yeah no, uh, no, we got like ten thousand dollar deductibles. And yeah, eighteen thousand out of pocket for a family. A um, little, little different. Now, yeah. medical technology's changed and things have changed, but um, that's one thing that's certain: uh, things will change. And things will change in your life. Things are going to come up. Things are going to happen. Uh, the question is, um, what do you do about it when it does? And what could you be doing to maybe stop some things from happening that you don't want to have happen to you? Trust me, I can tell you about some things you don't want to have happen to you. Yeah, which we're, we're actually going to talk, and talk about that and touch on because, you know, most people see healthy people like, well, you've been healthy forever and it's easy for you and you have to gone through this stuff and so uh, you know, everybody that comes on here has a backstory of a, some, some period in their life where you know health was not there uh, either a it wasn't a priority or b it got taken from them for a little bit because of something like cancer which we'll talk about in your case um, so uh, because you know like I said everybody has something everybody has something going on at some point and everybody out there needs to realize you're not the only one going through going through whatever you're going through Somebody else has gone through it at some point. Uh, so learn from them what they did to get through it and not just to survive it. Forget about survival. You know, how they actually came through it how, and how they're thriving in life. So, which you're definitely doing at this point with your 100 mile bike rides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, have, we have changed things. You know, yeah. it's interesting you, you said something. That when you're out there and crap happens, um, Use the fact that probably somebody's been down the path before you. Learn from others, others that have been down the path that you've been down. Most often, uh, people like me are more than willing to share, more than willing to tell you the paths that they tried, what worked, what didn't work. You still have to make a decision of what's right for you. But you know, you go out and you start talking to billionaires learn from other people's mistakes. The most expensive mistake you ever make is the one that you make 
with your time, your energy, your money to learn from that mistake. If somebody else has already made it, been there, done that, and you can learn from them, well, it only makes sense to go do that. And your health, I, I can't think of any place about your health where, where being healthy, that doesn't apply more. Yeah. There's tons of information out there. Yes, you have to sort through it. Okay, it's, it's tough to just get it on a silver platter. Yes, yeah, you or, have to or, sort or you, through or it. Or you find somebody sorted off through all the dead information. And that's, you to. That's, exactly, <laughs> that's exactly where I'm going. Find somebody you trust that can help you do that. Because you're going, I don't have time. Okay, well, there are people out there. There's a, there, like Clint, but wherever you live, there are people out there that will help you sort through things and that can just be huge in your life I mean it it took me a while uh, when I got sick I'll be honest man, I didn't have somebody like you I didn't know anybody I didn't know people like you existed okay, I, yeah you know what don't yeah when I got sick in in my <clears throat> 40s listen I'd been a professional athlete I used to run for converse you know in my heyday you know, I was running 120 140 miles a week Dude, I was invincible. I mean, in my 40s, I, I thought, look, I'm 40 years old. I can still walk out the front door and run 20 miles. I can do anything I want whenever I want. Man, I'm going to live to be 100. I'm going to be healthy the whole time. And then, bam. You said, am I going to hit 45? Yeah, am I going to see tomorrow? Yeah. And uh, long story short, guys, uh, I thought I had the flu, uh, and I never get sick. And so that's what was really weird. Went to my family doctor. Within a span of about five minutes, he puts me in an ambulance. Says, I'm having a heart attack. I said, dude, I'm not having a heart attack. He said, well, I think you are. And so we're going to the hospital. Takes me to the hospital. You know, you ever watch those shows on TV where they're rolling the guy down the hall on the cart and he's signing papers and stuff on the cart going down the hall to the operating room? Been there, been there, done that. Uh, well, we're not sure if we're going to have to crack your chest. We're not sure what's going on. We know something's going on. And so we went to the cath lab. I had a heart cath. By the way, that's an interesting experience. If you've never done it, you ought to do it sometime because I was awake while they did mine. You know? <laughs> uh, well, they were in a hurry. Yeah. And if you, if you didn't know it, they drill a hole in your femoral artery in your, down in your leg. And it, the drill looks just like the skill drill you have in your garage. It, it, it technically it, is, because it's what they start off using. <laughs> yeah, and it just, they bore a hole, and then they take this long tube, and they shove it in the hole they made, and they go up and look at your heart. So, they thought I was having a heart attack. Doc comes out to my wife and says, your husband's got the cleanest heart I've ever seen. I said, and, and I was still asleep at this point. I said, see, I told you I wasn't having a heart attack. But they decided I had a heart block, which is an electrical signal problem. So they put a pacemaker in my chest. A um, little fast forward, I don't use the pacemaker. It's been turned off for five years. That was a misdiagnosis. I told them there wasn't anything wrong with my heart. But what did happen after that was I had a reaction to the sealant they used on my femoral artery. They didn't know that was going on. Uh, they diagnosed it as blood clot. I spent 18 days in the hospital, three days in intensive care, trying to bust a blood clot that wasn't there. It was actually an autoimmune, an autoimmune response to a collagen plug that they had used in my femoral artery. My femoral artery closed. Uh, on the 18th day, they couldn't find a pulse in my right foot anymore. Uh, that's when I said, okay, you guys are done. I, I might not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm smart enough to know if you can't find a pulse in my foot, Clint, that's not good. No, it is not. And so I left, ended up having emergency surgery down in Dallas. It's funny, the vascular surgeon I saw down there made one pass with the ultrasound, one, and said, oh, that plug in your femoral artery's gotta come out. <laughs> now, I'd been 18 days someplace else. So remember we talked about finding somebody you trust and somebody who knows what's going on? Okay, so there's an example of finding somebody who knows what they're doing so the good news is he was able to save my femoral artery, save my leg. The bad news is I went 18 days, all the jump was in my leg, went everywhere, and my autoimmune system just went crazy. Um, I can show you some real cool pictures of idioangioedema where my lip is 
swollen up out to here. The side of my face is out to here. It, it them all over your body. The work I did was 18 days in a row, someplace different every day. Um, I started having an autoimmune response to food. So I put on my running shoes and go for a five mile run while I was having chest pains with the theory that either I would die or I would prove to myself it wasn't my heart. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I'm in the midst of all of this. Everything's going crazy. And then we figure out I have cancer. And so I had thyroid cancer and it was advanced. And so I lost my thyroid, all the lymph nodes out of my neck, uh, did the cancer thing. Even after that, autoimmune system still crazy. Mm -hmm. Nobody has any answers. Because I had 45 doctors' cell phone numbers at one point. I mean, I had, I had, I had seen a bunch of doctors. That, that's a lot of second opinions. That's, well, if they wouldn't give me their cell phone, I wouldn't let them be my doctor. Huh. If I couldn't call you up. That was one of my rules. I figured out real quick. That was a, if they won't give you their cell phone, okay. Because I was sick. I, I knew I was sick. I knew I needed help. Nobody had any answers. And it was at that point in my life that I found my Clint. And uh, his name was Dr. Paul Sullivan. And yeah. I still remember the I'm first here. conversation. Paul Sullivan is here, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to equate these two. He's, 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 a he's, he's a smart guy. And, but it was through a relationship that I got to Paul. Okay? It was through yeah. somebody just like you that I got to Paul. And for the first time ever, I was on the phone with somebody who said, Okay, there is hope. You are fixable. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to work on it. And we started the process of going to work. And I'll be honest, any, anybody that thinks that nutritionally you're going to just flip a coin and in the span of a few days have the coin come up on the other side and everything change, if somebody's telling you that's possible, they're lying to you. Okay? Anything fast that's going on with your body, and Clint can correct me if I'm wrong, but if it's happening fast, generally it's bad. Fast is usually not good because you got cell turnover to, to, to think about. There, there is no get fit quick. There's no get healthy quick thing. It's you, bare minimum. You, you're just going to take 90 days for something beneficial to really happen because once it's cell turnover, you got to get liver turnover. You got to get blood cell. You got you got tissue regeneration. All this stuff to, to go through. It takes it takes a year for your body to most regenerate. Technically, it takes 18 months for a full regeneration of everything. So. If it's happening sooner than 18 months, it didn't really happen. So it, it took me two of those 18 month spans <laughs> to, to go through. So if bad stuff is happening to you, we have to trade that out for good stuff. And if most of what's happening in your body is bad now, the trade off starts very gradually. Uh, I wish I could tell you there was some berry off the east side of a yak in the Himalayan mountains that you could take that would cure everything that's wrong with you. But if you ever go to one of those meetings, that's just not true. It, your, your ankle bone is connected to your neck bone. The body works as a whole. You have to treat the whole thing. You can't, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, it just, it just doesn't work that way. There, there, there is no one thing that cures everything, okay? There, there's usually multiples of things that help out with doing stuff and help your body and help your body work more efficiently, but it's combinations, combinations of two, three, four, five, six, 10, 20, 30 different nutrients. It's not just a single nutrient that does it ever. Yeah, so it's, you know, and, and I know Clint would say, it's like I tell people all the time, you, you can't out train a bad diet. I mean, if you're gonna eat crap, you're gonna, you're gonna get crap. But, but I said that to get to this, because we talked about this before we came on. Um, I do a thing called Good Small Decisions. Um, if you want to follow me on Facebook, you'll, you'll get a bunch of my Good Small Decisions. So when I got really sick, here's how I decided the only way I could deal with it on a daily basis. It was so overwhelming, I had to say, okay, 
what, what can I deal with right now? And so here's the way my thinking went. I just went, okay, is this a good small decision or a bad small decision? Am I making a good decision? If, if that little voice in my head said bad, okay, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when I was really sick, I just had to say, okay, did I make more good ones than bad ones? What bad decisions am I making that I can eliminate and replace them with a good decision? And it's not, that's not just working out. It's not, it's not just what you eat. Uh, good small decisions come in a lot of forms and all of these things affect your life. Uh, for example, you've got to start making good small decisions about your finances. If you're broke all the time and stressed out about your money all the time, it's going to negatively impact your health. Remember, the ankle bone is connected to the neck bone. You can't live like that. Well, you can, but it comes, well, it comes, okay. what, actually, what actually, stress actually, do, yeah. what does stress do to the yeah. body? I actually, mean, actually, technically you can't live like that. You can kind of subsist like that. Um, but stress, stress does everything bad in your body. Literally, if something's going on bad in your body, is due to stress of some sort. Either it's mental stress, it's emotional stress, it's physical stress, uh, it's environmental stress. There's some kind of stress that is impacting you that has to be addressed. And until you address it, it's going to keep on impacting you, and then it's going to start multiplying because an emotional stress starts turning into a physical stress, and you'll start having aches and pains because of some sort of mental emotional thing that's going on, or maybe I'll start having physical pains because of because of financial things going. Either way, stress starts stress beats you up from the inside out. It starts deep on the inside, and then you start seeing it on the outside at, at some point. Uh, you, you end up at the, you end up at the doctor. <laughs> And, and the buzzwords now are, you know, anxiety, yep. we're having panic attacks, okay, we're depressed, mm -hmm. I just can't be happy about anything, yep. and so they have a pill for all those things. Yeah. You know, half of America is on Xanax. Nerve pain. Nerve pain is the new one. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, and so we start taking medicines for something medicine is not going to cure the problem it will mask the symptom but it's not fixing the problem and so therefore you over a period of time by not fixing the problem it's grinding away inside and I want you to think about it this way if you allow that to happen you you have a lifespan by letting that grind you're you're just backing days off the end of your life mm -hmm. and here's probably what's more important it's not so much the days you lose, it's the quality of life you're gonna lose. Mm -hmm. Clint, I don't know about you, but I want to live until I die. Yeah. I wanna go out and play 36 holes of golf, three sets of tennis, run a half marathon, and die that night in my sleep. Okay, I don't wanna spend the last 10 years of my life in an Alzheimer's unit not knowing who my grandkids are. Mm -hmm. I don't wanna do that. Proposition, there's a lot of people going through that right now with their parents, and it's scaring the, it's it's, scaring it, the life out of them. It's not, it's not fun, and, and you got to understand why that, that's happening. Guys, if you just look at the disease rates and the stuff that's going on out there, we have way more of that stuff than we did 100 years ago. Way more Alzheimer's, way more dementia, way more cancer, way more everything, autism, ADHD. Just pick one. I mean, just pick one. Why? Well, it's because of stress. It's because of lifestyle. It's because of what we choose to put in our mouth. We're, we're doing it to ourselves. You know, people say, well, I just got dealt a bad set of genes. That is possible, but highly unlikely. You know, uh, we do it to ourselves, guys. We are feeding it to ourselves. Yeah, you're, you're having some very bad genetic expression because of something you're doing. Now. Occasionally, yeah, there's a there's a 0.01% that, you, yes, you got some, some bad genes that need to be corrected because of something, whether it's MT, MTHFR issue or whatever the deal is. Those can be corrected over some time to some degree and hopefully not pass it on to, to your kids or your grandkids. Um, but for for the majority, this 80% of people saying, well, I got bad genes. No, 
your genes are being expressed badly <laughs> is, is the issue because of, you know, you're, you're, you're doing too much of this with the wrong stuff and you're not having enough of this or you're having too much of the wrong type of this is usually what the thing is. It's got to go garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, so one of the things that, that I'm talking to people about when I talk about good small decisions and I talk about lifestyle and, and you know, I've been very fortunate. I met Dr. Paul Sullivan. ID Life came into existence. Um, I met some really smart people who really helped me sort things out and put Humpty Dumpty back together again. But once I got that process started, I had a lot of decisions to make. How am I going to live my life? What lifestyle am I going to choose? How am I going to exercise? How am I going to eat? You know, I had decisions to make that are going to impact now the rest of my life. Now I put Humpty Dumpty back together again and to prove I was reasonably healthy, I went out last year and rode my bike 10,000 miles. That's about 30 miles a day, every day. No days off. If you take a day off, you owe 60 miles the next day. If you take two days off, you owe 90. And if you take three off, you owe 120. By the way, 120 miles on your bike, if you can average 18 miles an hour, is a nice 10, 11 hour day on, on your bike. So you don't want to get to that point. Trust me, I had, had to do that a few times. 